Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much uh, for being here today. We have a small audience, which is good. Um, we will probably have some question and answer, so I'm going to try not to talk too much, and let's try to have it interactive. I will still go for the whole presentation, and at the end we can discuss several things. Um, so today the subject is how to build a data stack without breaking the bank. Uh, so quick introduction, I am uh, Gabriel, I'm part of Datadoo team, I'm in charge of the sales, and as a, as a very quick uh, overview of what we do, we are a data integration slash data management platform. And today we're going to land off four subjects. So the first one will be the data environment. What did change? Um, how is it becoming very dynamic? The second part will be uh, how the whole approach results in very costly uh, venture. The third part will be the single vendor solution that is no longer the, the, the answer to the modern data stack and the data needs. And obviously, how data do easier to deliver the flexibility that you need. So the clouds that change everything. Um, basically, the IT business was supposed to be more simple, uh, more accessible, but actually get way more complicated. So this is how the cloud system used to be for companies five years ago. So they used to have, we took five main systems, which were the CRM, for example, the social media platform, the website performances. But this is how it is today. So as you can see, all those different bubbles represent the tools and all the services, the cloud services that are now accessible and that generate data that you need to access. But this is nothing to compare what it's going to be. So imagine yeah, all those little bubbles, as uh, if we take a CRM, for example, before you used to have HubSpot or Salesforce and used to handle everything via this tool. But now you're going to have tool like Aircall or uh, with a lot of integration. And you need to track all your performances and get data from all those different systems. So as you see, there is a lot of, uh, lot of change, and this is going to be very challenging in the coming years. And the problem is not just about the amount of, of system or, or services that you're going to use, uh, but it's also about how to predict the future. And this is very, very complicated, especially now um, with the new channels, uh, new tools. You don't know what your marketing team is going to need. You don't know what your HR of financial team is going to need. So this is, this is going to be really the challenging part for the future. We took the example of TikTok. It's obviously very famous. In January 2018, in the global monthly user, used to represent something like 60 million. August 20, it was already over 700 million. And actually, they announced, I think, in July, August, uh, that they have over a billion users. So this is a perfect example from, uh, if we check the marketing team, the fact that you have a new channel coming, becoming trendy with a big audience, and you cannot avoid this. Of course, it's, it depends on um, the use of it, and you don't need to use TikTok. But uh, if, let's say, you are an e-commerce company, you need to be on TikTok, and you need to track all your advertisement, your performances about the campaign that you're doing on it. And this is becoming very tricky uh, to collect all those data. So how to deal with it? Having a system and data stack that can quickly adapt to the business needs. So obviously, this is in the, in the human sense uh, to be adaptive. But if we put it at the, at the data level, you need a data architecture that has to be composable. When we say composable, that means, and that's uh, go back to the uh, to the previous slide where all the bubbles, you need to have the capacity of bringing new components and imagine those components as cloud services and be able to add them in your data architecture. And the systems. The system has to be interoperable, which means that you need to have a correlation and a way to integrate and to be able to access all your data. There is a simple example. We just took uh, the, the composability outside of the tech. So if, for example, you're a gamer, and you're going to decide between a PC and a laptop, which one will you go with? You're probably going to go with a PC. The laptop, you're not going to invest in a laptop if you are a heavy gamer. 
because it's very difficult to change the components or part of the, of the laptop. However, with the PC, it's a different story. The PC has different components. You cannot change your memory, you can change your graphic card, and this is crucial for being able to adapt and to keep using system and new video games that are coming on the market. This is exactly the same for the data. And if we take the data stack graph, you have three main, three main components, let's put it that way. You have the data sources, which are all the cloud services uh, tool that you are using uh, to, to either reach to your client, to follow your sales, uh, to follow the financial the accounting. Then you have the data storage. You need to collect all those data and to store them somewhere. So this is how you have the data warehouses or data lake. And then you have the visualization tools. Visualization tools, it's all the reporting part. So you have tools like Google Data Studio, Tableau, and you need to be able to, whatever are coming from your sources, being able to present them in those reports. So we took an example of one client. We, we cannot name the client, but we, we can name all the services they're using. So at the beginning, and this was, it, it's to show you how you need adaptive. This, uh, this was a couple of months ago. So they came to us, they say, we, we need to use Google Analytics, Google Ads, and present all the data in Google Data Studio. So with our platform, it was pretty simple, and we start doing that. But then the teams and the different departments from the organization start requesting more, uh, more reports, more performances, more analysis, and they needed to access different data sources. So this is the second part. They came, they had the e-commerce, Shopify, you have Instagram, you have MailChimp, SEMrush, which are campaigning, email campaign uh, tools, and all the social media. And they decided, because they wanted to be a little more, uh, to control more uh, the data, so they decided to uh, use the storage, which is in that case Snowflake. It's a data warehouse. And they collect all the données and they do some extra transformation, uh, extra analysis and still present after that the data in Google Data Studio. And then, two months ago, they decided also to include the sales department in the system and uh, the financial. So they, they have some Google Sheet, Zendesk, which is like a ticket, how to track tickets on your website and in a store, Sage Accounting, and Salesforce. But for that, they wanted to have a little bit of a different architecture. They wanted to collect the data on MySQL, which is uh, also a database. Put it in Alterix. So Alterix is, uh, it's, it's not a, B, it, it's, it's not a AI, it's just to, to add some extra transformation and put some different layers in the way they want to analyze the data and then present it in Power BI. But in the meantime, they wanted to keep all the uh, marketing and social media performances on Snowflake and then present it in Data Studio. And this is a crucial part for, for now. It's the fact that in a company, you're going to have different needs. You already have different needs. But uh, you need to be able to have a system that allowed you to bring those new components, build a data architecture that will allow you to present in the way that you want and in the need. Power BI, for example, it's a perfect tool for our financial analysis. Data Studio, it's a little bit better when it comes to marketing. So this is the kind of data stack evolution that we are seeing right now on the market and is going to become even more and more. And this is the presentation. As I said, I wanted to do it quick. So um, do you have any questions uh, about that? And don't be shy. Feel free. Do I have one? Sure. Are, are you able to work or integrate all the services on cloud? Or are you working with, for example, on-premises databases, whatever systems? For example, you say I'm a small bank, and I don't want to have, you know, uh, to have uh, my uh, data in cloud. But I would like to operate with your is it possible? Or? Yes, yes it is. If you want to send all the data, obviously most of, in, in most of the cases now it's, it's on the cloud, but still uh, there is some industry bank, uh, some specific finance also, uh, that request to have uh, not a better control, but uh, in-house control with the on-premise, and this is something that we can do. We can send data. Uh, we, we don't store, for example, this is a very good question, we don't store the data. What we do, we extract, we transform, and we load the data. 
Uh, so we do the extraction, we transform the data in the way that it can be read, and then we load the data directly to either a database or we can do, as I showed you before, directly to a, to a BI tool. And uh, if, your, uh, if your database or data storage is on-premise, we can, we can definitely do that. We have different security levels we can apply, so this is, this is definitely something we can do. You're welcome. Sure. Um, to me, it sounds like, like um, the sales stack and the marketing stack are separated. Would you recommend the client to actually have one warehouse with, with one snowflake where all the data meets? Because I can't imagine marketing and sales reporting being separate. They always, at some point, they need to go together. You're absolutely right. Um, this is also something that we do. Uh, we don't push for any provider, or if we don't push for uh, any service that you should use. Obviously, we have some partner, uh, we have some knowledge about uh, some requirement that will fit better in a solution or another. But actually, what it's a good point. There is, for, for many clients, what we do, we collect all the data, we send them to Snowflake, and then from Snowflake, there is a possibility to, to do directly a transfer in MySQL, for example. So it's... It depends on the need. It depends on what you want to achieve. In let's let, let's be uh, let's be honest on that one. In 70% of the case, even maybe 80, they use only one database. So they collect all the data because, as you said, sales, marketing, it's related, right? You you have your campaign running, and they end up in a conversion of a client, and you need to be able to track that. So as a personal suggestion, yeah, I would say to put the sales and to collect everything in the same database. In that case, it's, it's a little bit specific because they wanted to use Alteryx after. And with MySQL, it was a little bit better because uh, of the way you have the tables and, and, and the data presented, it would be more efficient for them. And also about the data quality. Uh, it, it would be, uh, in that case, it would be just a better use. Sure. Yeah, thanks. I actually had a follow-up question on, on the same. Like, when you mentioned Alteryx in the second use case, I'm kind of puzzled why it needs to be retained in the data flow. Uh, I mean, are there any extra transformations happening within it that you can't do in your platform? Or? So what we do, it's called a light transformation. So this transformation is we don't change any data. We, we really transform the data, as I said, in the way that you can read them. So imagine the storage is a table, Excel, spreadsheet. You just want to have your data presented in the rows. Uh, so it's, it's a light transformation. If, for example, we, have, uh, we do a query, we request from an API, we have a connection, uh, we request the information, the last refresh of the data from yesterday, uh, and we have the zero. We're not going to change it. We're still going to present it in a database. So in some cases, you need to apply... When I say transformation, it's more function, uh, if you need to apply some function. Any other question? Uh, how did you get your first customers? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't say about that. So we've been on the... Um, we, we exist for uh, five years now, but we've been on the market really uh, presenting and having a public access to our platform, let's say, for the last two years. And uh, our first client, it's somebody that finds us by just a research from Google. And uh, they were from the Netherlands, actually, the first client. And they asked us, can they have a limitation with Google Analytics? So uh, you have an API that you can access, collect the data, but you have some limitations, which is in the number of rows, it can be the number of calls you can access, or in the historical data. And they were facing an issue like this. They contacted us. We created the connector for them. And this is how we start. And they are still our client, actually. They, are, they became partner. It, was, um, it is a, a data agency. So that's, that's how we get our first client. How much? Like, you're probably offering 27,000 different connectors to different platforms. How much time does it take to maintain those? Because like, every year, one of them decides to migrate the API to the next version. Like, of, of, all your, of all the time spent on your tech, how much time do you, how much time do you spend on maintaining a good question. It's, it's, it's difficult to measure, uh, but I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you saw it lately, Facebook like has 
big breakdown and uh, it's, they, they, they did some change now in the API. And in terms of the maintenance, obviously we are uh, close to their, to their tech team and they tell us we have updates when there is a maintenance. So the maintenance, I would say it's a good 20% of the, of the developer time uh, because there is some API, it doesn't change that much, uh, but there is some the TikTok, perfect example. They are improving uh, lately the, the API. It's about every week. There is something that we need to change on our side uh, to, to make sure that we can maintain it and, and still extract the data properly. Because also that's, that's the direction actually we are going in now. It's about the data quality. Collecting data, connecting to an API, it's pretty simple. Uh, but making sure actually the data that you're going to present to your clients uh, are right and, and usable, this is a different story. And we are putting in place some features uh, that will control the data quality. So data quality can mean everything. Uh, but for example, like Facebook, if for one day Facebook is down, we need to have a system that will tell to the client, hey, something was wrong here, you miss your data, we need to reload it or we need to do something. And, uh, and this is the, the, the big, uh, a big part of our, of our future development. It's data fabric. Actually, uh, we are developing now the connector for data fabric. So it's a part of it. We don't, it's not a competitor. It's uh, data fabric. They, they have different features. They have different aspects also in, in, the, in, in, in the way they present the product. And the, the way that we are approaching it actually is to send data to data fabric. Uh, so to kind of store the data. Absolutely. This is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to uh, do this slight transformation, send to Data Fabric, and then in Data Fabric, uh, the client will be able to do some functions. Or Data Fabric is a very good tool for those kind of things. If you want to uh, apply some function or some extra transformation, uh, this is actually the use case that we're going to have with this client. Any other question? I yeah, just want so we have a previous session this in integral services. Yeah. And other uh, competitors? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, we, we talk with them. We have a booth actually outside, so you're more than welcome uh, if you want to pass after. Uh, but no, we, we discuss with them, and I think there is actually a high chance that uh, we can partner uh, in, in a way. We are in the same field, definitely. We are all in the same field uh, at the end of the day, but um, they have a, they have a, a different approach. Like it's, it's, it's really different. We don't have any analytic. Like in our tool, it's really a pure ETL. So as I said at the beginning, pure extraction, transformation, and a lot of the data. We don't have any uh, analytic uh, platform or things like this. We just help, just is not the right word, but we just help the, uh, to collect all the data from all the different services that you're using. No? OK. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, for your time, that was uh, that was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, if you have any other question, as I said, we are outside. We have a booth uh, downstairs. Uh, we have a couple of our teammates there, so feel free to to pass by.